how to do homework again. That's what happens in the homework machine. Britton, Sam, Judy, and Kelsey all work together to create a machine that does their homework for them. The only problem is, some of the kids are getting better grades than they used to, and they all have the same exact answers. What happened did I start? I couldn't think of it for the longest time. Uh, oh, soon the police get involved, and the kids are questioned by their teachers. Will the kids turn on each other and admit to their crime? Will they be able to use the homework machine? And will their pranks pay off? You'll have to read to find out. <laughs> Structural conditions encountered determine the choice of ladders to be used at a fire. Hand ladders vary in length from 14 to 50 feet. Six men are required to carry and raise them. Forcible entry, cleanup, and ventilating tools complete the truck's equipment. So, this is our fire engine. This is engine 58. Um, the driver of the fire engine doesn't only drive, but he makes sure that that um, all the equipment is ready to go every day and also make sure that the firefighters have water when they need it and makes the connection to the fire hydrant usually. And this is called the pump panel. This is where all of that happens. There's lots of gauges and levers that um, that are fairly complicated that you just you need to understand how they work and then and this is the um, the method that, that we get the water from the pump to the end of the hose. This is large diameter hose, so this is the big hose that we've used to hook up to a fire hydrant. And these hoses over here are inch and a half hoses that we would use to put out the fire. We carry lots of rope. We carry something called the irons, which is a, a halligan tool and then an axe connected together. Back behind here, we'd have sledgehammers piercing nozzles, specialized nozzles used for firefighting for sticking through walls or through ceilings, through floors. Moving down we have, everybody probably knows what this is, it is a fire extinguisher. One of my favorite tools is the chainsaw. We use the chainsaw for cutting holes in roofs. This is a special tool firefighters use frequently called a pike pole. It has a pointy end and a hook end so that we can push it through something and then tear it down like walls or ceilings. So at the back of the engine is where we carry all of our, or most all of our hose. And so we have hose all the way up from five inch size all the way down to inch and a half size. And we also have two and a half inch hose it's used to put out larger fires. And these are very difficult to maneuver around and move, but we can do it with a couple firefighters. And over here, this, this engine, lots of um, engines carry the hose, or the, excuse me, the ladders on the top of the fire engine, but this engine has it inside, so it's nice and low. It's easier to get out. So the ladders actually slide all the way inside the fire engine. Here has a tool that we use called the Jaws of Life. And they call it the Jaws of Life because it's like a big T-Rex mouth, I guess. And he, as he twists it, it would open up and it cuts metal and it also will spread metal. So if someone's in a bad car accident and stuck and can't get out, we have a tool that can help them get out. Another thing we do is if the top of the car is smashed and down, or if we need to get someone out through the top of the car, we can use a sawzall. This is something you might see in construction on a work site, but it can also cut a car apart pretty well. It um, has a, a, an air tank on the back, and each air tank lasts about 45 minutes, and um, so we carry spare bottles because sometimes it takes longer than that to put out the fire. So here would be a spare SCBA cylinder. So this is the cab of the fire engine. This is where the firefighters sit back here. We have two firefighters, an apparatus operator, and a lieutenant. So the two firefighters will sit back here, and their job, if we go to a fire, would be to get the fire hose and to take it to where the fire is and to start fighting the fire. The driver, the apparatus operator, would be the one who'd start operating the pump and make sure that water came out of the hose. And then in the front seat here, this is 
where the lieutenant sits. This is where I sit. Their job at the, at the fire would be to take command and be in charge of the whole thing and make sure that everything's being done safely in the right way. And in this seat we have uh, what we call our MDC, which is our mobile data computer, which has maps on it and will give us information on the call that we're going on and will actually tell us the best way to get there, sometimes the best way, tell us a way to get to the, to the, the fire so that I can tell the driver who's concentrating on driving safety which way he needs to go. A few important questions for our firefighters. Who is the best cook in the station? Brian Jackson. I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> his tater talk casserole. Sure. We talk about his cooking a lot more than everybody else. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, what is your favorite meal to cook? Taco salad. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. good, I've had it. <laughs> if you weren't a firefighter, what would you be? If you were a firefighter, what would you be? I don't know what I'd be. Well, I know that when I was a kid, um, I was always really involved in youth sports. So um, when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a professional football player when I was grown up. Uh, when I was a little kid, uh, I wanted to be a cowboy when I grew up. But I didn't end up being a cowboy. I ended up being a firefighter instead, which was still pretty exciting. Who would win in a fight, T-Rex or Shark? Depends upon the environment. You have to wonder if you're in deep enough water for the shark to be moving around. I gotta think it's. Uh, I would think it would be shark. easier for a T Rex to fall into water and be attacked by a shark than it would be for a shark to get on the land to attack a T Rex. So I think the shark would probably win. T Rex, T -Rex would, <laughs> would definitely <laughs> win that battle, so, in my opinion. Could attack from above with yeah. a T Rex <laughs> is much tougher than a shark. Shark what do you think? Agree, the high ground is important. <laughs> striking down on a, on a victim is better than striking up. So in a shallow pool, a T-Rex would win. Definitely. Thanks, firefighters, for all that you do. She keeps on twirling and twirling and twirling and twirling around. She keeps on twirling and twirling and twirling and twirling around. And she's never gonna stop. Why would she? She's a princess.